All right, man, take a look at this. Wow. I mean, I'm really liking the look of this car right here. I mean, this is a sweet ride for sure. Oh yeah, so, all right. Well, oh man, what's up everybody? I just seen the camera right there. Yeah, so anyways, I'm not probably not the best of actors. I'm not in Hollywood or anything, but we definitely are right here on YouTube. So what we're sitting in right now is the 2013 Acura RDX tech package. And I'll tell you one thing right now, folks, the Acura RDX is such a nice crossover vehicle. Stay with us. I'm Chad with Charleston Car Videos. We're going to be doing our POV review here today. So when you first get in the RDX, this is what you see. Definitely a lot going on, right? I mean, you're probably saying to yourself right now, wow, this looks really nice. Got that nice big screen over here. I love how it's kind of hidden back there. It provides a little shade on the screen so it doesn't, you know, get where you can't see it from the sun. But there is a lot of buttons. I mean, my goodness, there's a lot of buttons in this area here. But once you get in here and start playing around with it and checking it out, you'll kind of figure out real quickly what the buttons do. And Acura does a great job of making them legible and easy to know what actually each button does, like map, guide, category, tune, scan, skip, XM, satellite, radio, all that stuff. Then you do have the main master button right here, which is your start, stop, engine button. That one right there is most important because that cranks the car up. But anyways, a nice layout, a good looking interior. The fit and finish is really nice. I mean, Acura is the creme de la creme of Japanese luxury vehicles, I'd say. They got great safety ratings. They come with a ton of standard features. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Let's talk about it. All right, so uh, let's hit the street, do our test drive, talk about it, get out in a few minutes here and look at it. Go ahead and pop this little puppy and drive. It does have a sport mode right here, which makes it nice to be able to use the paddle shifters, up shifting, down shifting, right? So you got that going on. And also guys and girls, let's not forget, we also have one of these. You got it, the Acura MDX. Take a look at that. So the Acura MDX is the midsize SUV, which I guess you could say the big sister or big brother of this one right here the RDX, and both of them are pretty similar in looks, but also color, interior, all that good stuff. That's the MDX. Now the MDX will have a V6, super handling all wheel drive and all that stuff. So again, MDX V6 three, oh, there's Mr. Chris. Yeah, he's the guy that buys these cars for us, which is so cool, but V6, 300 horsepower. And then this one here, the RDX has the four-cylinder turbo still a good bit of power somewhere around that 270 range from what i remember all right so let's take her down the road so the rdx i really think the takeaway on this car is all the tech stuff on it i mean this thing's loaded to the gills with tech features which is really nice also the all-wheel drive is definitely a good thing to have right which comes standard on the car, just like the MDX. It's good looking. It definitely is good looking. I mean, this thing has got a really nice look about it. So I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Now, being a four cylinder turbo, the car with the all wheel drive and that turbo under the hood, I mean, it's really fun to drive. Let's go ahead and give it a little gas and see. Oh yeah, doesn't that feel good? It does feel good. So power feels nice all right let's go ahead and uh take her down our normal route the rdx has incredible handling plenty of pep to get you up and out of harm's way if need be and uh real quickly here let's uh let's pull her in under the shade and let y'all see what she looks like I tell you, about any car can look really good under these beautiful Carolina oak trees. All right. So let's take a look at the outside. All right, there it is, 2013 Acura RDX. So a little history on this car, right? The Acura RDX actually came out, the first generation of them, in 2000, and you got it, seven. 
That's right. 2013 is this body style. And uh, not exactly sure when this styling came in. Probably do, do a little Google search there. But anyways, in 07, it was super popular. Everybody seemed to really like them. The MDX had already been out even back in 2001. So, and most of the time, most car brands keep a body style anywhere between three to five years. So let's think about it for a minute. 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12. So probably 2012 is when this second gen RDX came out. But anyways, another thing I've always liked about Acura, colors. Now they don't really have colors anymore. Now back in the day, I'll tell you, when the Acura Integras were around, they really had some bright, cool, fun, sporty colors. But Acura in the late 2000s kind of started mixing in more earth tone colors. And that's kind of what you're seeing here, like a sterling gray metallic. I think that's the color name on this particular one. I like the tinted windows. I like the, the stainless going around the windows. I like the silver wheels, which look nice. You know, just a, just a touch of chrome right here. Tail lights look good. Now you don't have LED tail lights or LED headlights on this particular one, but I can guarantee if you were looking at a brand new RDX, you probably would get a lot more LED stuff going on with it, but still very clean, very nice. I love the satin black or kind of a light black finish down the bottom with the reflectors. It does have the backup cameras. And again, I don't even have to necessarily tell you, but the car has got plenty of room in the, uh, in the trunk. Look at that, plenty of space back here. Um, so no third row seat. If you needed a third row, you need to bump yourself up to the MDX. But here you go. Plenty of space in the back. The back seats fold down for a 60-40 back seat split. And it seems like the subwoofers have probably gotten a little bigger over the years. The ELS uh, surround sound music system you got in here. But that right there, from what it looks like to me, is a 12-inch sub. Okay. Um, you can pull these little handles and that drops those. And then under here, look how clean it is open that up there is your spare tire you know some cars like bmw x3s and x5s don't even have spares right so at least you're still getting a spare tire um does have right here the little power tailgate feature you can do it on the button there on your remote or right here or hit the button up under the acura logo where the backup camera's at to open it as well the back window does not open on this car at all so it just stays like that some some have cars you know pop open like chevy tahoes and things but anyways um fuel is on the driver's side which i think you got to hit a button on the inside let's take a look in the back see what kind of uh, amenities you'll get right the interior is really nice now what i like about it is they haven't really put too many different colors going on on the inside, right? It's a little bit simpler with that. I mean, you got your light topish kind of tan color and then black and silver. So, oh gosh, I guess that's three colors, isn't it? <laughs> black, silver, kind of gray to match up with the outside and then the tan. But anyways, it all blends quite nicely and it's not too, too much over the top, right? Um, as far as music go, check this out. Look at that. You got those big old pods on these pillars in the back. So you know you got some mids and highs going on. Um, do you have a cup holder or a armrest or a cup rest? Well, you get a little bit of both there. But definitely, um, you got cup holders here and somewhere to rest your elbows out there. It does have a center headrest here if you need someone in the middle. And there back there is the uh, seat belt for the center. And look at that, even got a little microphone up top there for people that want to talk in the back if the phone call's going on. Because again, if mom's driving and dad calls and he wants to say hey to the kids, they need a microphone back here to be able to talk to dad. Um, it doesn't have a rear air vent in the rear, which I thought was kind of interesting, right? It's got a spot to throw things at, but again, no air vents in the back. That's not really like Acura. They're usually adding air vents in the back. So anyways... I guess it's not too big of a deal, but I, I am a big fan of, of a full armrest and with the cup holders kind of hit a button and they pop out. And I'm a fan of rear air in the back. I think those are really important things for, uh, for people that sit in the rear. I understand, you know, maybe you don't have that many people sitting in the back. That's fine. But if you do, it's nice to be able to have that option there for those folks. Um, up, to, up front, right? Yeah. You got auto up down feature on both front windows, power mirrors, power door locks, memory seats, all that good stuff. Uh, cubby hole area here to throw change in. Uh, bottle holder there. There you go. 
power seats, lumbar support. Look at the leather, it's still in great shape. Acura definitely uses good leather interior and they're not putting leatherette, synthetic leather in their cars, not that I know of. Um, so that's what I mean when I say a lot of standard features on an Acura, you know, they do come with a lot of standard stuff, but they don't really cheapen their cars down too much. At least Honda hasn't been uh, doing that. And I, I'm really, I really think that's great. Um, down here, it's nice and deep. You can move that around or take it out. There's a power outlet down, power outlet down there as well. Um, they used to, these used to come forward, but I guess not on this one. That's okay. It does have front heated seats, big cup holders there. And then right here, this opens up. There is a USB auxiliary and a 12 volt there. And like we talked about earlier, a lot of buttons and things like that throughout the inside. Yeah. Sunroof up top. Let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. And, uh, and then we will hop back in, take her for a drive and we'll see what everybody thinks. All right, we got the hood pop popped. Now, if any of y'all are actually paying attention to my videos, you probably will go in the comments section if you haven't made it to this part of the video yet, and you're probably going to correct me on something. That's if you are a knowledgeable person in this car. Now, I worked at Acura for 10 years. 2010, though, was the last year I worked at Acura, and I thought something, and I actually thought wrong. And I want to go ahead and bring that to your attention right now. So for many years, Acura's RDX, yeah, it came with the 2.7, I believe, four-cylinder turbo. I can't believe it, but this has actually got 273 horsepower out of a V6 naturally aspirated non-turbo. So, <laughs> For all that time there, the Acura had the turbo motor in the RDX, and I remember, because it was a big selling point on this vehicle. And let me tell you, folks, when you got in the first-gen RDX with the turbo, that little puppy got up and rolled out. I mean, it really had some oomph, you know? And uh, you could really feel that turbo just spooling up and in that all-wheel drive. Now, still does have all-wheel drive, but again, Acura has put the 3.5 V6 under the hood of this car. What well, still is a great size engine, and I'm telling you, there's probably not a ton of mid or for uh, crossovers that are coming with V6s, right? We do have one on the lot today, the BMW X3. A lot of them come with the four cylinders, but we have a twin turbo V6 X3, which is really interesting. So anyways, 273, still plenty of power. I wish they had the shocks under the hood instead of the little pipe here, but that's okay. For the main thing, I think you're gonna do pretty good with the 3.5. And if you're looking at a first gen, you're gonna do fantastic with the four cylinder turbo as well. But most likely what I'm thinking is maintenance and reliability and all that. Probably over the years, it's probably gonna be a better motor to have this V6 right here, non-turbo. Once these got really higher mileage on them, 150 and up, I do remember being on a car lot at one point or another selling a older RDX turbo, and it seemed to start having a lot of issues. Now, I know that may not be all of them, but again, turbo cars got to be treated a certain way, so I think you'll do a little better over time with the 3.5. All right, let's drive this 3.5 V6 all-wheel drive. Let's see what it feels like, right? I mean, I haven't really got up on it. I do remember driving the turbo versions of these before and just remember it was a really exciting drive. I mean, it just, it, man, it, it really honestly, you know, if you were to drive back then an MDX and then drive the RDX turbo, oh man, uh, on a performance side, the RDX really had it going on versus the big MDX with the V6 300 horsepower. Even though the MDX had more horsepower, the RDX still seemed to outperform it. <laughs> still, still gets up and goes, that's for sure. Can't overdo it too much because we're on some back roads here. But um, yeah, mashing that gas down, that thing wanted to take off. Pretty cool. Other things to pay attention to with all-wheel drive cars is when you're driving it, usually the torque steer and things like that aren't going to be so much of an issue. So... 
Pay attention to all that stuff. When you're out there driving torque steer, you may wonder what is torque steer. That's when I did just like I did a minute ago. I mashed that gas all the way down. If a car is front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, the car most likely in those situations will veer off one way or the other, you know, so you really got to hold onto that steering wheel and steer the vehicle. With the all wheel drive, you know, you mash it down, it's still pretty much going in a straight line there for you. So that's kind of nice. All right, guys, we're going to hop out, take some pictures of the interior for our website and uh, hop back in and drive her back home. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and uh, take her on back down to the store. Just got taken some really nice interior pictures. You know, I always want to get the car in kind of a, kind of a shadowy area to get the best photography interior shots of a car. You know, taking into sunlight definitely makes the outside of the car look good, but when shooting the interior, all the shadows that the sunlight brings into a car just doesn't make the interior pop like it should when filming it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get our seatbelt on. So you might be wondering to yourself, well, Chad, you know, I like the RDX, it looks good. I think it's gonna provide what I need it to provide for me and my family, whether it's you just zipping down to work every day or maybe you live in the city or maybe even live out in the country, right? I think this car can do it for you. What is it gonna cost me to be able to own an RDX, right? Yeah. Oh, let me show you something real quick, guys, before we tell you the price. And it's got a really nice backup camera. It's got the guidelines on there. If you ever were wondering, see that dotted line on the bottom of the guidelines? That dotted line, and I remember this from many years ago from the Acura rep coming in the store doing a demo with us. That dotted line there is 16 inches from the back bumper. So a little food for thought, you know, 16 inches there. So it kind of gives you a little gauge on how, how far back from the bumper when you're getting close to something. Because I don't think the Acura RDX on this one, I don't think it has those little beeping sounds going on. The backup sensors, I don't think it has those when uh, when you get too close to something. So you got to do it like the old school and just kind of gauge, you know, oh, I'm getting too close. Let me stop right here. All right, feeling good. So anyways, what does it cost to buy this car right now, currently in May of 2021? 16,990. 16,990 for a 2013 RDX Tech with 93,000 miles. Now you may say to yourself, well, man, that seems like a lot of money. You know, 17 grand. Well, it is a good bit of money, right? But do put into consideration, folks, the car, what it is, what it's got, and go out there and look for yourself and see what other vehicles like this are going for in your local marketplace. It's always good to do a little shopping and see if, if other cars like this, similar year, similar mileage and package are going for similar price. If the car that you're looking at on a lot is priced way higher than all the others, then maybe not consider that one. But again, guys, if mine is priced right in the middle there with everybody else, it may be worth taking the time to come check it out, right? And if it's a little bit higher than maybe, you know, some of the others, still stop by and check it out because we got to start the price somewhere. We're always here to make a deal happen, but you do need to understand, folks, and I'm sure a lot of car dealers are telling you, the car business right now is good, but at the same time, it is costing a lot more money now to buy pre-owned cars to stock them up on the lot. So uh, customers are paying more for cars, dealers are paying more, but at the end of the day, a car still has a value and you definitely need to make sure that the value and what you're paying all matches up. Have a great day. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you soon. I'm Chad with Charleston Car Videos established in 2011. We're here to stay.